some way stereo, old 90s stereo. Honestly, I had that stereo when I was a kid, okay? When I was a kid growing up, I had that exact stereo with the, the boom box, the, the CD player, and everything. How many years ago was that, Randy? Oh my God, I don't <laughs> think we want to talk about that. <laughs> to do better in their business, but I also have to How's it going everybody out there in YouTube land and whoever else is watching this video? So uh, we are here at our next uh, sale property. We are, this is kind of a walkthrough, a final walkthrough. I'm doing this uh, as a final walkthrough, so there's no surprises. We're actually closing on this on Monday. So it's been a long process, uh, but sometimes that's the way title works, that's the way things go. Uh, I am JVing this deal with actually a couple other people. Uh, so one of my good buddies, uh, Jordan over here, we've seen him on a few other videos. But he brought this from another wholesaler, then he brought this to me. And we're all open about JVing, so uh, everyone here is making money no matter what. So on this, we're gonna show you what this property looks like. Uh, you know, we'll go a little bit over the numbers and, and kind of the process on this, this and how it goes. Uh, so why don't you, Jordan, how did you come across this property? Well, um, I was getting pretty big in the Genesee County market and the wholesaler that was running the deal noticed that and he kind of lived a little far away so he reached out to me to see if I could find a buyer for it. Sent it out to my buyers list. I uh, got a few offers but they weren't really what he wanted so I reached out to Randy here, see if he knew yep. anybody and he found someone. Awesome. And that's the great thing about building a network of people and building a network of buyers is you never know what's going to happen. So uh, with that, you know, I reached out to a few of my buyers. I put it out to my buyers list and that I know that buys in Flint because we are in Flint, Michigan, by the way, if you're if you're not from the Metro Detroit area. Um, so Flint, Michigan has a very unique set of buyers i'll put it that way <laughs> it's its own so, it's its own city <laughs> it's it, that's the nice way of putting it so <laughs> um you know they they're there's their own complications just like every other city out there every other metro city out there um but it's still in my opinion still a great market for cash flowing okay so and that's essentially what this would this property would do um, so tell me a little bit about your agreement with the other wholesaler. Like, what did you, what did you come back and say, Hey, we'll go ahead and put this out there. Did you agree to a, we don't have to go in specific numbers, but did you agree to a, a certain set of numbers? Uh, yeah, it was, um, it's not a 50, 50 split. Okay. It's cause I'm, wasn't doing most of the work. You know, I was just you know, sending it out to my buyers in an email or calling them up, sending them a text, mm -hmm. you know, standard process. Um, you know, so it wasn't a 50-50 split. It, instead, it's more of a flat fee. And then, you know, because he found the buyer, yep. he gets some of that flat fee of mine. Exactly. So uh, that's kind of how we work as well. And, you know, we, we've worked an agreement out and I didn't have to actually put too much work into this. This is my first time at this property, to be honest. So I didn't even come walk the property first. Uh, I just put it out to my list to my buyers. I had my buyer run through this property and then he gives an offer. I didn't step foot here. Uh, this probably took a total of, if I added up everything with all the emails, with, with all that, I probably only have maybe two to three hours in this deal. Yeah. And that's it. This is my second trip here. The first trip was just dropping the lockbox off. Right. So honestly, that's where JVing comes in and that's where, you know what, I can work on other things while this is going on in the background um, and we can kind of go from there. So I learned to work with other people, work with other wholesalers. You're my competitor, <laughs> but we work together on some deals too. Exactly. So 
this is and and that's the that's the good thing is is that um, you know your competitors could be your friends. They're not your enemies. <laughs> right, well. you know? So we all work together. And like my motto is, let's all do deals together. So honestly, that we all make money when we do that. Exactly. And honestly, if there is two wholesalers in the same market, then that's more houses coming in that they can work together, JV yep. on, you know. And, if one and they'll, have can... over, they'll have overlap buyers but one will have more buyer or different buyers than the other. And if someone puts all the work on the seller side and just getting the sellers, then they can have somebody else put the work into the buyer side and yep. close more deals. Doing a acquisitions, dispositions, you know, it's, it, they're each their own game. So um, building the systems out to work with everybody and, and kind of go from there. This one here was a very unique, it's, it's very, it's livable. It, we're gonna walk through this property the furniture is still here. The appliances are still here. Okay. It literally looks, I actually told him, I'm like, are you sure they moved out? <laughs> are you sure this is vacant? It looks like I'm walking into uh, somebody who just up and left for vacation. <laughs> you know, I actually had to reach out to uh, the person who has it under contract, the wholesaler who has it under contract, and like, are you sure they're, they moved out? <laughs> the ditch is in the sink. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, you know, you'll see when we go through this. But I honestly, um, that was the appealing for my buyer is he can come in here, he can rent it out right away. Okay. All he's got to do is a, a quick clean out, and um, and just do a quick cleaning, and that's it. So, and, and then he can quickly rent this out. You know, he purchases it for a certain amount. So let, let's talk a little bit about the price. Okay, mm -hmm. so my buyer is purchasing it for twenty three thousand. Okay, mm -hmm. he's paying all the closing costs, so he has a little bit on on top of that. Um, and then there's going to be the fee, wholesaler's fee. Now I'm not going to go into exactly who gets what. All I'm going to say is we all get paid. Okay, and the seller gets what they want, the buyer gets what they want and we get what we're agreed upon. And the good thing is, is that they come across more properties and we get to do this again. So um, I, the reason why I don't wanna go into exact numbers is because we, you know, I wanna, the other wholesaler who's not here, I don't wanna, you know, reveal what they're making without, Privacy, their, yeah. without their permission, that's all, okay. So, but I know between me and you, we should be making at least a couple grand each. Yeah. You know, so we'll, we'll, we'll just talk about that. <laughs> four to split. Yeah, yep. four to split. So, um, you know, and I think that is very fair considering I have, what, two to three hours worth of work in here. And I got $5 in gas. I mean. <laughs> exactly. So uh, I, I think it's it, it really uh worth the effort and kind of that's why i work with other people as well so that brings me to the next thing is if you have a deal in the metro detroit area or in michigan period send send me your deal we'll work on it i'll overwrite i'll underwrite it see if it's good for my buyers and then we'll put it out to my buyers list i we can jordan does the same thing he works in genesee county area so uh I'll put my number at the bottom here. It's, you know, everyone sees it all over the place. 586-307-4765. Also, my email will be down here at the bottom as well. So go ahead and, and check that out. Jordan, if they want to get a hold of you, how do they get a hold of you? If they want to work with you in Genesee County, Flint, anywhere. Uh, well, you can reach out to my website. Uh, my name is Jordan Smith. My website is homesellsmith.com. I... Uh, Mm -hmm. Spells is exactly how it sounds. <laughs> um, and I'll put that at the bottom here. So, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if you're a buyer and you want to join the buyer list, there's a way to do it at the bottom of the homepage. Yep. Or contact me from there, or my cell phone is 810-874-2725. Awesome. So with that, what we're going to do is we're going to walk around this property. We're going to do a quick outside. Then we're going to go inside. You know, leave in the comments what you think what you think about what this is. If you want to see more videos like this, I want to know because if I don't see enough comments in here about 
about these type of videos. If you don't like them, I, you know, maybe I'll stop doing them and try something else. I don't know. Got to leave comments and let me know what you think. So I, uh, from there, I appreciate Jordan. I really do appreciate you coming out. Uh, let's go ahead and walk around. We'll go handheld here. So, and go from there. So we're going to walk around, uh, this property here, but in the meantime, I mean, I don't know if we have the information on why the sellers are looking to sell. Do you know that Jordan? Uh, yeah, the actual owner of it passed away and then it was, you know, inherited by their, okay. um, you know, descendants, their kids. Um, and they just, they didn't have a need for it. Awesome. So inherited properties, I mean, honestly, best motivation. Um, I'm not saying that they're, we're trying to scam them out of getting the equity or anything like that. We're just trying to give them fair what uh, an investor would pay for it and kind of go from there. So right off the bat, I'm, I'm going to be as, as a, you know, maybe coming from an investor standpoint, what I think this property, property would need if they were to flip it or if you were buy and hold it. I know my buyer is going to be buying and holding it. So um, some of these things that he's probably not going to do. Um, like for instance, all th this driveway here, like it, it, if I were to flip this, the, this, this, the whole thing need, would need to be redone, you know, and kind of go from there. So let's go ahead and, I love the blue, but some siding are, is going to need to be re, you know, to be fixed and then maybe repainted. Um, it, the blue makes it stand out from this neighborhood from what I see. So when I pulled up here, I actually really do like the blue because blue is one of my favorite colors, as you can see. So, <laughs> all right. So, uh, you know, Jordan, what would you do to this property? Um, if you, as we're walking through, why don't you get some of your notes as well and what you would do if you were to flip the property? Cause you've done a couple flips already, mm -hmm. you know, in this area too. So, um, you know, what would you do if you were to flip the property? Well, the Flint market isn't exactly premium in most areas. Um, I would keep the siding as is, maybe repair it in some spots. Yep. Uh, it definitely needs uh, some windows on the sides here. It looks like they're not very insulated, so they're going to have a high heat bill. Um, so these windows right here. And that's an oddball size, so you got to get kind of custom too. They're expensive. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would definitely get new. Uh, what are those awnings? Yep. For the windows. Um, if I was holding it, I would keep the roof until there was a bigger uh, problem. Until with there it. was a need. Yep. Okay. You know, even though if I were to flip it, you know, I would definitely put a roof on it. Okay. Awesome. So that's the difference between a flip and a buy and hold. You don't know, like if you're gonna buy and hold it, sometimes you these things can be off put. Like buying and holding. I would not replace this uh, this driveway as a buy and hold because you don't need to. You know, somebody's gonna come through here and they're just they're gonna rent it out until there's a need, you know. Um, until maybe a city inspector tells you to, <laughs> you know, and something from, like that. From the point of view of the one living here, it's you know, if you're renting it, a lot of times you don't plan on living there. Right. You know, so, so you don't need the best driveway. You don't need the best siding or the best roof. It's because, you know. Right. Like, so let's go around to the back. This it looks like this does have a basement, right? Yes. Okay. Awesome. So we see the basement windows. That's how we can kind of tell. Uh, we'll go down there and see from there, but it's got a nice two car garage. It looks like it's not attached, um, but that's okay. That's most of the houses in this neighborhood. So when you comp properties and you look at comparables, yeah, you, you can more. see they all look about the same. <laughs> so, um, you know, we've got a nice little yard here. We got a little fence up, you know, um, we look at the back of the property. It's not, it's not run down. This is livable. This is rentable. And that's exactly what my buyer is going to do. The only thing is, is that I would look at is, is the trees that are very close to the foundation. Yeah. As a, as a buy and hold investor, I would probably look at trying to get those cut down because you don't know what those roots are going to be. Um, this is Michigan and those trees, 
the roots go everywhere. So, <laughs> um, so with that being said, you know, uh, looks like there's some gutter work up here that just needs to be get, get done. Um, just some repair work here and there, and that's about it, honestly. So we got this nice big yard. So if we look here, nice big yard, nice garage. Again, we need some gutter work here, maybe some patchwork on the, on the roof there. Only if it's leaking, to be honest. So let's see here if I can get my selfie stick up there. Okay. So you look at that roof. There's just some branches in there. I think a good gutter work and clean out and you'll be fine. So um, yeah, it looks like somebody broke in that door here. Got a wow. door to fix. So, all right. So with that being said, let's go. We're going to head on to the front and go from here. So we're about walking in here. It's got a nice little safety gate on the front. We're coming into the property. And like I said before, this, you come in here and I swear to God, I thought somebody was still living here. Okay. I don't get it, but I had to, I had to, <laughs> somebody's stereo, old 90s here. Honestly, I had that stereo when I was a kid. Okay. When I was a kid growing up, I had that exact stereo with the... <laughs> The boom box, the, the CD player, and everything. How many years ago was that, Randy? Oh my god, I don't think we <laughs> want to talk about that. <laughs> that was quite a long time ago. This was probably we're probably looking into the late 90s. Okay. Okay. I was in uh middle school going into high school. So I started high school in 98, graduated in 02. Okay. So that if that tells you my age right there. I, I actually, I turned 41 the day this closes. I turned 41 years old. That's a birthday present. There you go. That's my birthday <laughs> present. So as we're walking through here, we got a, it's a small living room, but it's cozy. Okay. And this is a three bedroom. Is that right? I believe it's a two. This or is a two? Maybe three. It's been a minute. Okay. So we're going to walk through here. This is the kitchen first. Okay. So as we saw... You got a little dining room, little nook here, and then a little outside, you know, view of the outside. Um, this is the kitchen. Let's see. Uh, let's see if this works here. Nope. So they might have the power turned off. But kitchen, somewhere still in the sinks. I thought somebody was living here. <laughs> I seriously thought somebody was living here. So... They probably, you know, hey, then we got access to the basement. So let's get down to the basement first, just because I'm already here. Ah, okay. So we have, work. see if we can get Rain. something. Okay. So down here we got, it's semi-finished. It's semi-finished over here. We got a uh, little nice little bar tab and uh, got a fridge down here. Let's turn around to the opposite side okay interesting so he the the gentleman down here was it, it, this was his little man cave over here so all right this is this is a true man cave here look at look how old this tv is this tv is older than i am my grandma had that tv yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right let's look over here Okay, so we're gonna look over on the other side here, in the laundry room. All right. Appliances are still here. Appliances are still here. We got, let's look here at the floor because I saw a little bit of leakage here. Is that just coming from the sewer? Yep, and it was there before. And it was there before. So we are good. My buyer already saw that. So, hey, that's fine if that was there before. So let's look over here. Okay, all right, so. This is just a typical Michigan basement. We always want to look at the uh, the electrical panel. We always want to look at all the walls, make sure there's no, no actual cracks, or if there are, make sure they're superficial or anything like that. So foundation-wise, everything looks to be good for now, or at least it looks like it might have been repaired at one point. Might need a tube of you know, sealer you know, or something. Tube of sealer. 
we come through here and we got the utilities. So we got the furnace. Uh, let's see here. Furnace and the hot water tank. Those are in relatively newer condition. So honestly, I think my buyer is getting a hell of a deal on this property. So um, let's head on back up to where there's more light. Walk through the rest of this house. Cobwebs. Ah! All right. What's in here? Okay, this is just a closet. All right. I want to make sure that wasn't didn't lead to upstairs or something. So we come through here and we got a little nice little pink bathroom. This is typical what you see in these older older homes. What year do you think this is? So I honestly think this this is probably 19 70s? 70s or 60s. So I don't know what year this home was built because I didn't do my research on that. <laughs> so, but uh, anyways, let's look at this. We're going to look at some of the bedrooms here. Blankets are still in the bed. Clothes are still in the door. Everything is still <laughs> here. This is crazy. So, and we're closing on Monday, by the way. If we didn't have confirmation they lived here, I'd be out of here. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I had to get confirmation that nobody lived here before we started doing this. That's what I meant. Yeah, <laughs> so we come through here. This is the second bedroom. All right. And again, it looks like somebody just left, just up and left, you know. And is this a third? It is. It is a third bedroom. So this is a three bedroom. So window unit's still here. <laughs> <laughs> so this is this, this does not have central air. This has window units, which is good. I, I don't want I mean I'd rather have central air, but um it's good for us because we get added value. So in a small house. It's a very small house. All right. As you saw, we just went through this property. Oh my god, it, it is creepy that it looks like somebody is still living there. I <laughs> I don't know what to do with that, but we did get confirmation that it is vacant and the seller from the seller themselves that, and that was the only reason why we actually entered. So with that being said, uh, we close on Monday. Monday. And uh, from there, we should be able to get everything going uh, and on to the next deal, okay? So if you want to get added to either of our buyers lists, go ahead and send us uh, the email, contact us, and we'll go from there. Until the next video, like, subscribe, and comment down below. Let me know if you like these videos. And let's all do deals together. What do you think? Let's get them done. All right. Once a day that I would pray for you I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too Sneaking looks up and down from across the room Damn, what a hell of a view I